Dear friends, as Father has told us, the title of the paper is Study on the Arrangement of the Sanctuary. This is actually a part of the structure of the Saranabad Church. And I have prepared this paper in relation to other parts of the Church. A thorough study of the structure of the church is a need of the time to get away the differences of opinion regarding the celebration of the sacraments and especially of the Holy Eucharist. We take here only the arrangement of the Madhubhaha, that is sanctuary, and its use in relation to other parts of the church building different names. Different parts of the Madhubhaga are known under different names. First, Madhubhaga means altar. Kudos Kudise, the Holy of Holies, is the place which includes the altar and the area around the altar. Some people build a canopy above this area and is sometimes a little elevated. Elevation is not noted in the official structure. It is veiled. Third, a big lamp is hung or put in the middle of the Madhuga. For best could say, holy place is the best side of the sanctuary lamp. Fifth, Udisha is the whole sanctuary area surrounded by the veils. Six, Kange is not Kancheli. According to these scholars, it comes from the Greek word Konge. It is a place allotted for the choir in the sanctuary. It can be anywhere in the Madhubhaga. Thomas of Marga calls the interior of the church Naos. Now, the, according to Ordo, although there is a general understanding about the structure of the church, when we go deep into the matter, there are much confusions and uncertainties. Ordo Telebaration Skudasa, Yustayutsu Mekrasi Sura Malabarensis, issued by the Oriental Congregation on the 7th May 1959, gives the following instruction on the structure of the church. First, the church faces the west and it has three parts, Haikila, Kestroma and Madhubhaga. Kestroma is a little elevated from the Haikila and Madhubhaga is three steps above the Kestroma. There is a veil between Kestroma and Madhubhaga. Best Sahade, there is a place for the saints, where the bodies of saints or relics are kept are generally in the eastern wall near the Madhubhaga. Water is attached to the eastern wall. Tabernacle should be on the altar. Taksa is placed on a cushion on the south side of the altar. Relics or other things which are not necessary for the liturgy should not be put on the altar. In the best sah, best kasa, or on a table in the north side of the Madhubhaga, bacon and bread to be consecrated are kept. Water and towel for the hand washing are placed there. Chinese wine and water are kept in the south best kasa, or on a table there. There should be perpetual lamp in the church where the Holy Eucharist is kept. This can be given outside Madhubhaga. A big lamp is hung in the middle of the sanctuary. Now, according to the 1986 text, based on the instructions in the order, 1986 text gives some more precise instructions. It fixes the place of the gospel on the north side of the altar and the sketch of the plan of the Madhubhaga shows 
crawls in the middle of the water. It clarifies the term, the north end and south end on the assumption that the church is oriented. Where the church faces other ways, the right and left should be reckoned as north and south. 1988 document reverses the instruction on the right and left thus. To avoid all possible ambiguity, in this document and the rubrics of the new text, right and left refer to the right and left hand of the congregation as they face the sanctuary as indicated in the schema. This change can confuse people when they refer other liturgical books. According to our liturgical tradition and practice, Bell Saturday is never put in the Madhubhaga. Burial is also strictly prohibited there. There is a place called Sakinda, which is a niche in the wall between Kestrom and Madhubhaga, where the relics of patron saints or of local saints are placed for special veneration. Bell Sagade is found often on the north side of the Madhubhaga proper or on the north side of the Haikila, it's a special small chapel. The place of the gospel and cross is not mentioned. The place of the tabernacle is not on the altar. Now regarding altar, Suravala Pontifical prescribes that water should be of best quality wood and it suggests cheap wood, and so on. Like the Coptic and the Jacobites, the Eastern Dapa, that is the, uh, what is called, is a small water, water, is of mulberry, apricot, and so on. The Assyrians continue to use wooden altars and Dapa, while the cold Calgians and the Malabarians have given a way to the stone or marble. In the Eastern tradition, there was the custom of wearing special slippers by the clergymen who entered the sanctuary. Best diakon, that means sanctuary. Best Madhubhaga, the place where baptism is held. These directives do not consider best diakon and baptistry as part of the sanctuary. But if we examine the commentary of George of Arbel, we find that sanctuary has three chambers. The central chamber or sanctuary proper, a north chamber which serves as diaconicon, and a south chamber which is the baptistry. Balsabi calls this diacon on the left side of the Madhubhaga, Eden the dwelling place of all sinners. And this diacon on the left side, right side of the place of the just. According to Mara it was the it was in the diaconicon on the right side that deaconesses were ordained. In the diaconicon itself there is a small place called Tantura for baking bread for the saints, for the sacrifice. It is also found in the best Mamadisa. Best Kasi, that means where the gifts are placed. Best Kasi are the north and south sides of the Madhuga. Nowhere in the East Syrian Church, there is the tradition of having Best Kasi, the eastern wall of the Madhuga. Some people in the Melbourne Church put Best Kasi in the north wall of the West Yakorikon and south side of the Madhubhaga proper. These places are not acceptable if you follow the liturgical instructions and tradition. The place for keeping oil for anointing is in the southern wall of the Madhubhaga. It is called Best Messiah. Holy Eucharist can be preserved in a special Beskasa in the northern wall. Originally, people were allowed to take the Eucharist home and preserve it for private communion. It was later strictly prohibited. 
because it gave rise to various abuses. In the churches it is preserved for communion of the pre-sanctified, consecration of all days, and the communion of the sick. The guarding priest was not allowed to eat, drink or sleep. He shall be not allowed to keep it for three days. According to Pius Smith, it is kept in the vessels in the north wall of the sanctuary. Assyrians and the Kajians keep the tabernacle for the sacred level and oil on the altar itself. E.S. Troyer speaks about such a tabernacle called Gyuta, which the Nasorians use for the reserve of the sacred level, namely Malka. Father Yusuf speaks of the Kajian tabernacle as a reserve for the sacred leaven and oil. Gospel the Taksa and the Cross. The restored Taksa of 1986 says the Gospel the text is to be placed at the right end of the altar and the Taksa on the left side of the altar. Mentioning the necessary things for the consecration, Gubir Katraya says the Cross and the Gospel that are put on the altar and the icon of our Lord over them, in the midst of which terrible mysteries are consecrated, take place of the place of our Lord. On the use of the cross and gospel, Rudolf Sataksa says, in the procession to the Bema at the beginning of the Kubana, a cross and gospel are taken. When the procession reaches the sanctuary from the sacristy, the second deacon places the gospel on the altar. The first deacon who carries the cross places it in the middle of the bema with two candles, one on either side. During the events of the Kange, the first deacon takes the cross and gives it to the celebrant who receives it, kisses it, and extends it to be kissed by the archdeacon, deacons, ministers, and the faithful. During the Venis of the Evangelion, the celebrant goes up to the altar, takes the gospel from there, kisses it, and extends it to be kissed by the ministers. After taking the gospel back in its place, the celebrant and other ministers take their seats. The deacons alternate the Turgama of the gospel with the choir. After Durgama, the celebrant takes the gospel from the altar and holding it to, be to his forehead, goes down to the Bema in procession. Cross accompanies the gospel. After reading of the gospel, the celebrant closes the book, kisses it and gives it to, be to the deacon who places it on the Bema. The cross and candles are also placed in their respective places on the Bema which is supposed to be in the center of the Haikala. As a preparation for the dismissal service, the archdeacon takes the cross and hands it over to the celebrant, who in turn passes it to the first deacon. The celebrant then takes the gospel and gives it to the second deacon. The deacons go up to the altar and stand facing one another. After dismissal service, the first deacon, after kissing the gospel, receives it from the second deacon. The second deacon, after kissing the cross, receives it from the first deacon. They place the gospel and the cross on the altar. For Gabriel Katraya, the going out of the cross from the sanctuary is the mystery of the going out of Jesus to the wilderness. The raising the cross on the Bema is the mystery of the frequent going up of Jesus to Jerusalem. The going out of the gospel and the cross with it is the mystery of the humanity of our Lord, which was with body and, body and soul. The cross is a mystery of the body which, has, which was crucified, and the gospel is a mystery of the soul in which there is resemblance. After reading of the gospel, the cross and gospel are put on the Bema. The removal of the cross with the gospel from the Bema 
is the mystery of the apprehension of Jesus by the crucifiers. The erection of the cross at the sanctuary door is the mystery of the crucifixion of Jesus on the wood. The separation of the gospel from the cross and the fixing of it on another side is the mystery of the separation of his soul from the body and is going to the paradise. While the gospel and the cross are at the door of the sanctuary, the deacons make the dismissal service. He continues to say that after the dismissal, the cross and gospel are put on the altar and they take the place of the person of our Lord. For all communities, the dismissal service is conducted at the entrance of the Madhubala with the cross and gospel there. Barsobi notes that the cross fixed at the top of the pedestal was used for the purpose. He mentions only the removal of the cross from the sanctuary at the beginning of the procession to the Bema. And then when he speaks about the gospel procession, the cross is also mentioned. From where the gospel come for the procession, I'm reading. He also makes clear that before the dismissal service, the cross is separated from the gospel in order to symbolize the separation of the soul of our Lord from his body. He also says that the gospel is placed in the nows, that is the interior of the sanctuary, in order to signify the entry of the soul of our Lord into the paradise. But George of Arbel and Balsobi admit that the cross and the gospel are placed on the altar after the dismissal service. Abraham Ketraya Balifa notes that during this singing of the voice at the Kange, the cross goes out and enters the Dema. The gospel is not mentioned. The gospel with the cross comes after the apostle and son. The cross is held upon a long pole. After the reading of the gospel, there follows the removal of the cross and the gospel from the Bema and are placed at the entrance of the sanctuary. The cross is placed at one side of the entrance of the sanctuary and the gospel at the other side. After placing them at the entrance, deacons make the dismissal service. For him, the cross and the gospel remain there during the Kurbana. They are not transferred to the altar. The gospel is not brought from the sanctuary. From where does it come? The answer can be found in the commentary of George of Abdel. The Oenis are the Kanga is sung. The procession goes from the sanctuary to the Bema. One deacon carries the cross. Two deacons stand on the Bema near the altar and the bishop having the cross and the gospel. The readers of the Old Testament and the deacon who reads the apostle come from the sacristy with the books. After the reading of the apostle, the priest goes with the deacon to the sacristy and prepares for the reading of the gospel. After the reading of the gospel, the deacons carrying the gospel and the cross go into the throne. Those who carry the cross and the gospel do not place them on the altar and in the various bound. Timothy II gives the following information. The anthem of the sanctuary is sung. The cross is brought and is placed on the bema. The veils are opened. The priest who reads the gospel, which is sent from the bema, goes to the door of the Madhubha and prays. After reading, the priest gives the cross and the gospel to the deacons who carry them from the Bema into without possession. The cross is placed on the right side of the sanctuary door and gospel on the left side. Matimati says exactly where cross and gospel are to be placed in the end, while others have no indication whatever. The cross represents Christ and the gospel the teaching of Christ. We should remember that the right hand side has always been the side of honor. Cross and not crucifix was 
always used. The Emma and the result of the disappearance. All the commentators speak about the Bema in the center of the Haikila and its use in the liturgy. In the 14th century, owing to the Mongolian invasion, churches were destroyed and the Eastern Catholics took refuge in the north Mesopotamia. The faithful fled to small villages in the mountainous areas. Most of the churches built there were too small to accommodate the needs like Bema. In such cases, Bema was merged with Kastroma and most of the ceremonies which were traditionally held on the Bema were shifted either to the sanctuary or to the Kastroma. This was how the non-restored rasa was held. When the original structure of the liturgy is restored, these ceremonies which had been held on the Bema are to be shifted back to, to it. This we have partially achieved the restored text of 1986. 1988 Roman document says, it is laudable that the liturgy of the word be celebrated at the Bema in the center of the name. 1989 Texas says, distinct from the altar, there should be a Bema for the liturgy of the world. The Bema should be arranged in the center of the name. Under the present circumstances, it may be arranged in the Kastroma. Liturgy of the world is celebrated at the Bema. Wherever the decisional Roman Synod, of 1996, how the Kurbana celebrated in the major seminaries and as far as possible in the other houses of formation, experimenting the Bema in the middle of the century is still wild. But even now, in many dioceses, the religious houses, it is the word is conducted either at the altar or putting a table in the sanctuary. I may throw a light on the recent restructuring in the Madhubuga the whatever the seminary where I was for a long time professor, which has instituted rational rituals for the oriented formation of the Sri Malabarians. Malabar is extended in such a way the literature of the world is conducted there. The way which was there before can be used to separate this part from the part where the world is placed. This extended part is a new, a few steps higher than land Haikala. The Kastroma is no more. The church has practically two parts, namely Haikala and Madhubuga. Therefore, it is a new dimension, integrating Kastroma and Bema with the sanctuary. The basis are also put on the eastern side of the Madhubuga. This structure is against the existing regulation and the century old tradition of the church. So I have so many other things. So therefore I am going to conclude as putting in certain points for, for uh, your consideration. In conclusion, in the, in the light of what, uh, what I have tried to explain, certain things are to be still discussed. First, can there be space with the water and the eastern wall? Where is the sacristy? Best diacon is the best diacon part of the sanctuary. Is there an opening to the customer from there? For where are the scriptural texts kept for the reading, including the gospel dictionary? Fifth, are the cross and gospel used for the procession for the same? ones which are placed on the altar. Cross and gospel are carried for any Christian procession, even for the reception of high dignitaries. Therefore, is it possible that in the early church, cross and gospel were put on the altar for the Eucharist, and another cross and gospel were taken for the procession? Even the non-restored rasa, Christian Mondeim, that's the cross, was taken for the procession. It was ended, it was erected at the end on the side of the 
sanctuary entrance are not the northern side sides at the entrance of the madhubaga the four places for placing the cross bell and gospel for dismissal service till the end of the kurbana is it not proper to place the cross on the right side of the altar and the madhubaga is it not convenient to place water and the towel for hand washing on the south side where the chalice is prepared when there is only one celebrant where do we keep the holy eucharist where do we keep the holy oils for the anointing should the best you say can be on the north end and southern side of the madhubaga proper can the liturgy of the word be conducted at the altar can the liturgy of the word be conducted in the sanctuary these are certain, certain things are to be discussed anyway the paper is difficult i feel because the terms are not familiar to you madhubaga Vesters are, and so on and so forth. Now, this I can only help because these are the official names of the southern parts of the Madhubaga. With these words, I can go to meet them. Thank you, Reverend Dr. Thomas Manurayam Parambil for uh, clearly explaining the terms, the structure, and the functioning of uh, uh, the sanctuary. and there may be so many confusions of course you have explained the matter in such a way that any clear structure of the uh, sanctuary uh, needs perfect understanding and that serves for the public liturgy in an elegant manner so you have towards the end you have given several questions to us also anyway it is time for questions and discussions so please the power is open thank you father thomas for your nice presentation and uh, we your center your team the idea and the arrangements of the sanctuary for the sanctuary well uh, as far as i understood the paper is my professor uh, about the rasa structure but father what do you say about the day to day our daily public uh, banana where we celebrate do we uh, connect all these sanctions and uh, The same way as you explained that the rasa structure is not possible. So what is the the daily mass and the Sunday mass and also as well as compared to this rasa? You see that the church has only one text of the book of mass. That is the most solemn form. And when we explain the structure of the church and especially the madhubaga. we we have in view the complete structure you see and then according to our church there is no private celebration there is no celebration of a single priest that is why rome was insisting always the church has to introduce diaconate and deacon is an inevitable part of the celebration and according to priests without a deacon a priest is not allowed to celebrate the kurbana you see that we are going back to the tradition insisting on this point the synod has restored diaconate but even now no deacon was appointed so this is a part of the lack of the knowledge or their ignorance of it i don't know what it is uh, anyway to have a meaningful celebration we should have at least one or two deacons so diaconate is not it is a liturgical necessity it, they are not meant for other things it's a liturgical necessity that we are lacking it even now although right they have theoretically restored diaconate no bishop is ready to consecrate any deacon so we should not go back from the structure 
Now, for convenience sake, we have divided into the celebration into three. Mol Sola, Sola, Symbol. And we have given exceptions. When one trees a symbol banner is there, what can you do? But that is not the ideal celebration. But that is a regular celebration. That is a difficulty. Our people have not even seen what is the most sort. They are not given any chance for it. That is good. Otherwise, they will question the authority. What are you doing? So, in order to save their own, their own face, they have to hide the complete uh, celebration. In the Senate in 1996, uh, in Rome, I was the MC for the celebration of the Kurban of the Sura Melodorians. All the bishops were in the Senate celebrating. After the Kurbana, one expert came to me and said, these bishops do not know how to celebrate the Kurbana. So this was a comment from the observer, because they are not used to this complete form. But maybe because of factual time and so on. Anyway, we, the text has now given clear-cut instruction when a form is used. Symbol form, some exceptions. They are not ideal, but they are given there. And one priest is alone. Roman Dugans give clear-cut instructions. So there is no difficulty practically, even if we are using a symbol form with single one priest. We have asked a number of questions at the end of the afternoon. I think I have not had as many questions answered in addition to it. I will just ask the question, whatever is possible, please answer. Because it is because I am invested in this chapter of the tradition, that's what I am going to do for all these years. So, the Baptist is that. In some churches like Tano, it is in the middle towards the north and south. Uh, like Kaduthi, it is in the middle of the world, the other side, right? And in the author of Jacobite churches, mostly now it is near the Nama, just to be the Nama. So, what is the, what could be the exact spot for the Baptist Nama, the Nama, the Nama, the Nama, the Nama? Yeah, I will answer and then you can again answer. You see that, I have not explained everything in the paper. I have taken a holy sanctuary not the structure of the whole church. According to our structure, I will have to take classes, sorry. Um, according to our structure, the entrance of the church is to the southern part. The reason given is that the Israel came to the Jordan, crossing the Jordan from the southern part. And uh, Jordan was the uh, crossing the Jordan was baptism for the Israelites. So in this Israelian church, people enter through this through the southern side, and therefore the best uh, mamudisa or the arteries is placed on the south side of the Madhubha. There they receive baptism. People who do not receive baptism are not allowed to enter the church. After getting baptism on the southern side, they go to the church through the entrance of the Bema. Bema is the representation or symbol of the earth, Jerusalem. Jerusalem is the center of the earth. That is how it is. Because God has revealed, God has come there. because. That is why it is the center of the church, where Christ taught. So in the, on the Bema, people are taught literally the word is held. And following this word of God, and living the word of God, people are led to the sanctuary. And the sanctuary is the place of heaven, it is symbol of heaven. Haikala or Neb is symbol of earth. So people through the world cross, cross from through the Bema to sanctuary. Sanctuary is symbol of heaven. And today's Kurbana is a heavenly Kurbana because Christ is in heaven. 
It is not earthly. Where in the Krubana we see the mention of angels and saints and because it is heavenly liturgy. People are taking part in the heavenly liturgy. And after the death, they perpetuate this adoration in hell. Okay. Therefore, this is in the southern part, that is why the true part, not anywhere else. So people enter the southern chapel, that is the baptistry, get baptized, and through the door come to the Haikala, for a name, to the Bema, from there to the sanctuary. And that is our life, that is the end of our life. So, after Latinized, because of the Latinization, it was placed at the entrance of the northern part. That is the Latin tradition, I think. That is how the Latins uh, dropped this Baptist, Baptist street on the southern side of the Madhuga and placed it at the entrance, the western side of the uh, church. And that was a tradition. And in the Suramalabar church, a huge part of the hierarchy and people are still Latinized. And therefore, they do not want to change these practices. That is how even now people in some churches and dioceses, baptism is held in the, in the, in the western part of the entrance of the main entrance of the church. Otherwise, if you follow the structure, it is on the southern part of the Madhubala. Okay, thank you, Taliyastha. Yes, no, no, let him do it. <laughs> Thank you very much for your insights. I would like to ask about uh, the position of the hanging lamp, uh, yeah. which is in the high, middle of the high kala or which part of the church? Traditionally, it is in the middle of the high kala because middle of the high kala is the place where the Bema is placed. The second word, uh, the I, I, answer is not over. Why the lamp? Because Christ is the Lamb. The presence of Christ in the church. That distinguishes the church from other buildings. That is the reason. Second one, we use uh, cross or sleeva uh, on the bare one and the other one is on the altar. Yeah. Is it uh, allowed to use two uh, slivas on the bare one and the other one is kept on the altar? And if at all use on the altar, which part of the city is is it kept on the right side or left side or in the middle? I will add, because you see that in my paper I have said the Georgia Fabel speaks of two crosses. All of them speak of one cross. The problem is there. Uh, anyway, according to our present uh, instruction, the cross used is first held in the, on the altar and is taken to the Bema and it placed back in. On the road. I think accordingly it is not needed. We can use two crosses that is proper writing according to the commentators. One uh, gospel is placed on the altar, it is there forever. And also, in cross and gospel are taken to the Madhubuga. But according to the commentators, it is not placed, they are not placed on the altar, but at the entrance of the Madhubuga. For example, you, you see that a uh, picture, I do not want to show it. You see here, the gospel and cross are placed at the, not on the altar, but on the entrance, the northern and southern part of the Madhubara. So, you have taken a solution, that's all. Thank you. Any other questions or, uh, I hope, uh, no more questions are there. So we thank uh, Dr. Thomas Manumbaramil for their presentation and explanations. Thank you for your questions and interactions. Thank you so much.